WL Toys has recently put the V666 FPV quadcopter on the market. This quadcopter is for people who like aerial filming and photographing. In this video, I'll try to review this huge quadcopter with camera, which is sent to me by GearBest.com. As I said before, this quadcopter is really huge as you can see from its box. And as always, I would like to start by measuring the sizes of the box. The width and the height are 57 centimeters and the depth is 17 centimeters. And this box is exactly 2.2 kilograms. This means that you will find everything you need in this box even a micro SD card reader. Now look at the box content. First, the quadcopter. It's assembled as a whole and ready to fly. You just need to connect the battery and bind the transmitter. The transmitter just needs 4 AA batteries. And finally the spare parts and accessories. The exact content of the box are like this. An RC quadcopter, a 2.4 GHz transmitter, a battery, a camera, two antennas, an LCD monitor, a card reader, 4 GB microSD card, a balance charger, 4 spare propellers, a user manual. The V666 comes with an HD ready camera which can record videos at 720 pixels resolution and take photos at 2 megapixels. The transmitter on the camera can send the video to the monitor and you can do FPV. Now, the main features of the quadcopter comes. 6 axis gyro and improved stability, 2.4 GHz radio frequency, 5.8 GHz video frequency, up to 150 meters control distance, up to 10 minutes flight duration, 360 degree aversion, 720p video recording, 2 megapixels photo capturing, shock absorbers, separate antennas for video transmission, 90 minutes battery charging, multiple ports for missile launcher, water cannon etc. V666 is square shaped and the sizes are 52.5 cm. But you can carry it easily. It has 350 grams weight and can be delivered to your address without any shipping fee by GearBest.com. These are the transmitter and the monitor of V666. First, I want to show you the transmitter. This transmitter is the usual WL Toys series transmitter and can be powered by 4 AA batteries. It fits well on your hands and you can feel the weight. It is made of thin plastic, but it has a quality feeling. After turning on the transmitter, a backlighted LCD screen comes. You can see many parameters on the screen. This is the throttle and rudder stick. When you push this stick, the quadcopter will ascend. It's very sensitive to your commands. When you push the stick to opposite direction, the quadcopter will descend. Then, when you push the stick to left, the quadcopter will yawn left. You can see the percentage from the screen. The right stick is for moving the quadcopter forward or backward. When you push the right stick to the top, the quadcopter will move forward for example. This stick is as well as for moving to left, or right. There are two buttons on the top of the transmitter. This button sets the speed of the quadcopter, in other words, the response to the stick's movements. It starts with 40% and when you push the button once it sets to 60%, 80% or 100%. The other button on the top is for 360 degree aversion. When you press it, you'll hear the continuous beeping. After that, you have to push the right stick to the direction you want to aversion movement. The buttons on the right side of the screen are function buttons. With these small round buttons, you can start video recording, turn on or off the LEDs, take photos or even switch between transmitter modes. The mode button is used to switch between transmitter modes. You have to press and hold this button when the transmitter is turned off and then you have to turn on the transmitter as shown. So, different modes will appear on the screen and you can use them. But don't forget to set the right mode by pushing the button between two stick. So, the throttle stick can be taken to to right or left. Mode 2 is the most common one. However, you can't try and find the best for your needs. 
don't be afraid switching between modes. All you need to do is doing some practice. To find the best match for yourself, try every mode by switching between them as I show. The small buttons near the sticks are used for trimming. You can set some trim if your quadcopter moves to any directions gradually without your commands. You have to push the trim button to the opposite side of the movement. Every beep means one level of trim. If you hear a long beep, that means the resetting to the standard trim. Now, I would like to show you the monitor and how to mount it to the transmitter. There is a hole on the transmitter and you can see it by pushing on it. The monitor can be mounted on this hole. Simply take the monitor and push it to this hole and press well. When you hear the click sound, it is mounted. Now open the sunshade and mount the antenna. You have to turn the antenna until it is fixed. By the way, you can use mushroom or clover leaf antennas for better performance if you wish. Besides, if there is interference on the signal, you can bend the antenna for some degree. There is a charging port under the monitor. You can use the USB charger which comes together with the quadcopter to charge the battery on the monitor. You can turn on the monitor by using the button on the right side. If the camera isn't turned on, you'll see the no signal writing on it. You can dismount the sunshade if you wish. Actually the screen is not very bright and it is difficult to see it under sunlight. Now, we're ready to fly. As you can see, I've installed the antenna and it can be used horizontally or vertically. If you have problems with the video distance, you can use different antenna positions to find the best match. To power on the camera, video transmitter and the quadcopter, you have to bind the plugs from the battery. It is very easy, just do it as shown. But be careful with the camera cable which must be connected to the main board. If the video recording and taking photo functions are not working, you have to bind the camera cable to the main board. Now, the only thing I have to do is placing the quadcopter to the surface and turn on the transmitter, then the monitor. arm the motors, you'll have to push the left stick to the top and then push it again to the bottom. So, the motors will be ready to spin. As you can see, the V666 is very stable. But be careful on windy weather. You can easily lose your control. If strong wind affects the movements of your quadcopter, switch the speed modes by using the button on the top left on the transmitter and set the speed to at least 80%. So, you can gain more control on the quadcopter. By the way, don't forget to do some 360 degree aversion movements. It's really fun to do this. If you don't know how to do it, you can look the previous section on my video.
Now, you are looking at the LEDs of the V666 at night. As you can see they very charming and bright. To turn on or off the LEDs, you can simply press the button with the light icon on the right side of the screen. When you press once, you'll see that the light icon on the screen will disappear. If you press it again, the icon on the screen will appear again. This is the monitor of V666 connected to its camera. To record videos, you first have to turn on the transmitter and bind it to the quadcopter by doing the binding movement. After binding, you can press the video button and start recording videos. The timestamp on the screen will turn red and this indicates the length of the video being recorded. When you press the video button again, the video will be saved and the timestamp will turn white. Now you are looking at the camera quality of V666. As you can see, there is no or little lag when I move it. But when the video recording process starts, there will be lag. This lag is acceptable to a degree. The resolution of the screen is about 480 pixels and this will be enough for beginners, but not for half professionals or professionals. To take photos with the V666's camera, you have to press the button with the camera icon on the right. The screen will go black when taking photos, but it will turn to its normal status after a second. The number of the photos can be saved to the microSD card is shown on the screen. By the way, the two beeps you're hearing is coming from the transmitter and it is the indication of the low batteries in the transmitter. When you are done with taking photos or recording videos, simply turn off the transmitter and the monitor. Finally, these are the sample photos taken with the V666's camera. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel.